Hi, Petra here from Great Little Homestead. Today I'm going to show you how I did build this flow through warm compost for indoor use. Easy enough that I did it all by myself. I'm not a carpenter. I do not have special skills or anything. I just use basic tools and I'm happy about it. I like those bins very much because it eliminates the need of sifting through the castings once your worms have no room anymore and then you have to go through and move them into another bin. This is very time consuming and can be a real mess. So with this one here, you have, you see three layers here. So the bottom one is made for just indoors because to catch the liquid what to build, um, be built up from the worms. So that flows into a bucket. And you start with the bottom, or in this case, the middle frame here. You start with your worms in there. And while you add the food, they move up. They eat the food and you have more and more castings in there. So they move up. Then they come into the second frame and the third and so on, depending on how many frames you wanna make. And then after a while, the bottom one, there are no worms anymore. So you remove all your frames, you take out the bottom one, you put your other frames back, uh, and then you have just the castings here and no worms anymore. I like this idea a lot. Also, you have the possibility to build as many frames as you like, as big as you want to go. Um, I do this indoors during winter because here in Canada it gets really, really cold and the worms will not survive that. So I opted to move them inside here in my little um, feed room where I prepare all the feed for the animals and everything. It doesn't stink or we don't have any trouble with any fruit flies or gnats or anything. So. Uh, I don't mind that for a few months during the year. In summer, they go back outside in a shady place. But enough for that, or enough of that for now. Let's get started with the actual project of building this. Okay, I would just say, let's get started. First, all the material we're gonna need to build this. I need to make a tray to collect the warm tea. Since my bin is going to be in the basement, I have to make sure I don't have the stuff on the floor and running everywhere. That wouldn't be so nice. So I got some three inch by one inch lumber and I cut it to size 18 inch and 24 inch. And I'm gonna make a tray from this one, which I'm gonna line with tarp, six mil heavy duty tarp. And I'm probably gonna use this little tiny funnel to direct the warm tea into a bucket. Um, then the warm bins themselves, of course. I opted for one inch by four inch lumber, same size than the three inch ones, 18 inch and 24 inch long. I do know many people use two inch thick lumber but I opted for the one inch because it is not as heavy as the two inch and um, weight can make a difference while handling for sure. Um, about handling, I have made two handles for each tray. So when I have to carry them around, I have something to hold on to and that is going to be very nice. I also made those little pieces, what I gonna put on the side of each tray so when those trays are um, stuck on each other on top of each other they can't move they are secure in place and can't fall off also i have some washer screws washers here sorry washers and matching screws for it i'm gonna use those to secure hardware mesh in place which is going underneath those warm trays. This one has quarter inch sized holes. 
I also gonna need the share to cut the wire, a hammer for staples if needed, my staple gun and the staples of course, some wood screws and the drill. So I got all the frames ready to go. I put in the handles already so I can grab them pretty nicely now. And what I have to do with the top two horns is, well, the wire needs to go in here, um, the hardware mesh. And before I do that, I want to put in the tarp in the bottom frame to catch the um, warm tea. And I'm going to do that from the top because I want the wood to be covered in tarp as well from the inside so no liquid can be soaking or can soak into the wood. I can see that being a problem over time because I think it might stink quite a bit. Another thing I would like to show you is when you fold in your tarp, you want to make sure that everything what needs to be folded to make it fit goes upwards. I hope you can see that. So it goes upwards so no liquid can go in there and leak. If you would do that, for example, some kind of this way, liquid still can go in and it's probably gonna make a pretty big mess. So um, I'm gonna use my stapler and put all the staples in here to hold the tarp where I want it. And then uh, I will come back to you and show you how I did this. As you can see, I have been a little bit busy. I finished all the trays and I made a lid. For the lid, I used 1 8 of an inch thick melamine board. I made a handle for it, which I screwed into the center. And I drilled 1 inch holes five of them for air circulation and to prevent any flies or anything going into the compost I covered it, the holes with the window screen and taped it to the underside of the lid. I also made two of those bars from wood um, which keeps the lid pretty well in place so when the lid is on it won't fall off or slide off. That's the lid, pretty easy actually. Uh, these are the trays, as you know. The handles are installed and I also put those little wood pieces in. So um, when I handle the tray and put them in place, they don't fall off. I could see that important, not when you have just one tray or two, but when you stack more on each other and, and you handle them and then you push it by accident or whatever and then everything falls down. That would be really bad. So I already got the screen attached. After I have cut it to size, I stapled with a lot of staples. I stapled it on the wood frame. And I also used the screws and the washers to just make it a little bit more secure and hold it a little bit better. Um, again, nothing worse than having everything ready, handling the trays, and then uh, the wire gives in and, and everything drops to the ground. Wouldn't be so nice. So I made two for now, but what I really like about this setup is you can always add more trays as you need and this is something really cool. The last thing I have done is I put the tarp into the bottom frame um, which will catch the warm tea. All I have to do with this one now is attach the funnel in the center. I will do that after I installed the legs which uh, still needs to be done. But for the tarp, I stapled this one as well. And uh, I think it is going to work quite nicely. So all I have to do now is get the legs in. And then the most important part, 
move in the warmth and the funnel for the liquid to run into a bucket. The base is finished as you can see. I taped the tarp to the wood frame with some duct tape to cover everything up, especially the staples. And as you can see here in the center is my funnel. I use duct tape as well from the outside and I cut the tarp a little bit smaller than the diameter of the funnel is just to make sure that everything goes right in the center and I hope it is not running backwards um, under the tarp, but I doubt that it will. So, and you can see I have some water in here because I tested my idea and I have some more water here just to show you how nicely that works. On the other side, I have my wonderful duct tape work <laughs> and you can see I have attached a hose to the funnel so everything goes into the bucket and nowhere else. All that I now have to do is put the trays for the worms back on and then move the worms into those trays and then they can go right back to work. Here it is, all finished, the flow through vermicomposting bin. I think it turned out quite nice and it is ready for the worms to move in, which I will show you in part two of this video series and I will give some detailed information. So if you don't want to miss it, please subscribe, it's for free and you will always get a notification when we upload a new video. If you think this video is of any use for you, which I hope it will be, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you have any more questions or just want to leave some info on your own experience about this type of composting, please do so in the comment sections below the video. Thanks for watching.